Hi all and welcome to Under the Skin. Um, I'm very pleased to be joined by Lucy. Hi um, Lucy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. No, no problems. Um, so Lucy, you currently play your club cricket at Rothley Park Cricket Club. You're part of the Loughborough Lightning and you've just been selected uh, into the 100 for the Trent Rockets. So a uh, bit of an intro into Lucy. Uh, Lucy, I, obviously we've had to delay this a, a few weeks, but um, you're just coming back from a concussion injury. <laughs> How, how's that? How are you recovering? Um, yeah, it's been quite a long road. I've had it for quite a while, but hopefully we're getting near the near the part where I can get back to playing some cricket, hopefully. So exciting. Very exciting. And uh, you just didn't didn't watch one closely enough or oh, Yeah, I, yeah, okay. I ramped it into my own head. I think maybe it's just a shot that I put away for a while. <laughs> maybe we learn on hitting straight. I think that's maybe the way to go. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, uh, let's on that. So, um, yeah, obviously you've played for England indoor previously in the under-19s, um, yeah. and, and obviously our show's mostly about indoor and, and combining that with what you're doing outdoor and stuff. So, you know, how did you get involved into indoor when you started? Yeah, so obviously I grew up playing my county cricket in Leicestershire, and there was a team, I can't actually remember the name, the exact name of the team, but it was, Le- it was Leicester, it was called Leicester. It's now obviously Birmingham Leopards, and it's the same team that's kind of moved across. But yeah, I just ended up going, I think it, my first round was a National League that I played. I must have only been like 14 or 15 and I played and um, absolutely loved it. And then from then on played kind of quite a few of the National Leagues, then obviously got into the British Open kind of stuff. And then kind of transitioned as that Leicester team moved across to Birmingham Leopards and I've been playing kind of the same team ever since. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, we, we, did, we did a talk with Lucy Weston earlier and it's a good hub out of Leicester. You know, lots of girls coming from there playing indoor um, and that's brilliant to see. Um, and then obviously you played those national leagues. You obviously excelled and you, you were very good as you are outdoor. And you went to the, the World Cup in New Zealand in 2014. Yeah. So uh, that was Windy Wellington. Um, so long ago, doesn't it? Yeah, it seems so long ago. But um I remember it for one particular reason, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, how, how do you think being, you know, involved in a tour like that, more so perhaps for your life skills ahead? So obviously you played in the World Cup, you've now been at uni. Um, how does going away as a youngster, uh, being in that environment, doing what you do, you know, help with those life skills? I think it's massive, massively important. Like I'm quite, I'm quite a family orientated person, so going away from my family at the time seemed really daunting. Um, but I think kind of just putting yourself outside your comfort zone, obviously it literally is the other side of the world. You have to be quite self-sufficient. Kind of take accountability. We actually toured with quite a young team, quite a, well, probably I think you'd agree a very inexperienced team kind of within the realms of that. And I think just kind of going through not only kind of living by yourself in a hotel room, but kind of going through all the bits and bobs you go through kind of, well, I think, well, we, we had a good, we had a decent tournament, you know, how, how to deal with wins, how to deal with losses, kind of all that kind of stuff, how to deal with different personalities in the team. When you're away from home and kind of, it's, it's much more different, like dealing with different people and kind of dealing with oppositions, different cultures. Like it was just, yeah, I, I think it was, I'd recommend anyone who can to tour when they're younger, for sure. Yeah, no, well said. And like you said, it was a very young team. And, and going back to that moment I spoke about earlier, so the, the thing that stood out for me and why I'll never forget it was oh. that the whole under-19 girls team actually managed to get stuck in a lift in the hotel and um, had to get the Wellington Fire Service out to come and rescue you girls. So um, that for me was, was yeah, a standout moment from many of the tours. But uh, yeah, just, I don't know, what happened? You know, tell us a story. I think for a very long time, I've tried to palm off responsibility to, to, ev- to everyone else. Realistically, we had to have a really short team meeting. And I think it was like a nine man lift and we had like 13 people. So with 13, like 16, 17 year olds, and I was like, he'll be fine. Everyone in the lift, like quite a snug fit, quite a snug fit. And then we kind of like, it kind of dropped and then stopped and we were like, oh, that's an issue. And I remember looking at the sign that being like the weight limit in kgs and kind of going, well, every person must be kind of like, if you say every person's 50 kg, we're definitely over the limit here. Yeah. And then and- kind of like trying to call Nikki Patel and all of a sudden you just hear this like, they hear this voice coming from the, from above us and we were stuck in between floors. <laughs> that was yeah. like, the man. I'm also quite claustrophobic at the time. I don't not now actually, but that was the most stressed I think I've ever been. It was horrific. Yeah. And then I remember the fire service coming and they were having to get you down and it was, yeah, it was quite a good, good experience, but strange yeah. nonetheless. And uh, yeah, one really of the, fresh. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
So how how has obviously you were extremely talented from almost eleven years old really at cricket from what I remember watching you play and and um, you know being part of that journey. But how has indoor cricket helped you with your outdoor game? Oh, I think massively. Um, and I think to be fair, it's something I've only I think I took it for granted when I was younger, and it's something I've only really kind of realised when I now watch outdoor players play indoor. How how different it is and like the skills that you have to have to be able to play indoor. So I think you watch outdoor outdoor players talk about indoor and they go, oh, we well, just just stand in the thing and whack the ball. Like, how hard is it? But having seen some of the best outdoor players my age play indoor, like, it really is not that simple. Mm. I think, like, playing the ball late into the floor, kind of the tactics. And for me, the biggest thing is fielding. Like, I think I love fielding. And I think that's definitely come from a background in indoor cricket, for sure. Like, all the little flicks, kind of just wanting to be in the game all the time, like, con- concentrating, that kind of stuff. I think that's definitely what I've taken from the game. Yeah, no, um, it is. And, and we've been lucky to see, obviously, the Loughborough Lightning and the Loughborough Spark sides playing in these tournaments. And it is brilliant to see, you know, really, really strong outdoor players coming in and how they adapt in the indoor game. Uh, and then obviously seeing players like you have played indoor for a long time, playing against these guys and, and girls and, and seeing how you get on. But, um, no, those skills, the fielding skills in particular, like there's there's no way it doesn't help you with your outdoor cricket, you no. know direct hits you know run outs all these things that are becoming so much more you know happening so much more in cricket outdoors for 2020 in short term format um you know i've seen ben stokes and other people doing the flicks in the ipl and, and other competitions uh and getting run out so it, it is really interesting um i also think sorry i think for the for the slightly younger players and one thing i kind of really learned and really kind of grasp from coaching the sparks team in it is i think when you play outdoor cricket sometimes getting out and kind of not having to battle against it can almost, I know obviously it's a horrific thing to battle out, but it's kind of a luxury of the game. Like you're out, right, you're going to sit down, you think about what you've done wrong, you reflect, and then you you get out and the same bowler is bowling, the same pressure is on, you've lost five runs to your team. You can't go and sit, about, sit and think about it. It's literally you and your partner. And I think that kind of resilience that you build around that and kind of thinking, having to adapt your game plan really, really quickly can really be translated into outdoor cricket. Yes, you might not go out in outdoor cricket, but you still have to adapt your game plan and go again. And I think that's something that I think our girls really learn. Point Because not many people have spoken about that kind of side of it. And, and it is pressure in the points, pressure in the fielding. But you just added a whole different sway on things. As a batsman, you can go and sit down. You don't have to think about it. But in indoor, you're against that same opposition, that same bowl over the very next ball. And more like to be even under more pressure because they know they're taking your wicket once. Yeah. So they're going to come harder for you again for the second or third time. So, um, no, that's really interesting, actually. I, I really think you know, that's a great point that you've made um, there. Uh, and in terms of socially, um, you know, the National League, the British Opens, they're obviously great events. You know, you get to play with lots of different girls, lots of teams, and you're there all day. Sometimes it's weekend tournaments. Um, from a social point of view, how, how is that? You know, in comparison to the, the uni lifestyle as well? I absolutely love it, personally. I think like as I've got potentially busier and I've not been able to play as much indoor I've still tried to get kind of down to days maybe not so much the evening stuff but down to days I think like I'm massively fortunate to obviously I moved counties um but I'm massively fortunate to be able to play with girls I grew up playing cricket with and like, that for me is really exciting kind of you're around the same group all the time like it and it's just it's just a different it's just a different group of people I think it's I absolutely love it kind of you, play year in, year out with the same people. You see the new girls coming in, the younger girls coming in, you see the talent. I think you watch people adapt and you watch the great the game grow and it has grown so much in the past kind of five, six years. You know, you watch teams come in who potentially weren't great at the start that are now challenging in finals. And I think it's just it's just fantastic to watch the growth of the game. I absolutely love it. No, brilliant. Thank you. Well said. Um, so be nice to me today. It's so strange. I know. I, you know, I have to be nice on these things. Like, I, I did think, great. do I... Do I take the mick a little bit out of you? Do I? No. Honestly, Anish. <laughs> Keep it professional, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but your best moment in indoor cricket, firstly, and then your best moment in outdoor cricket, what are they? Uh, best moment in indoor cricket would be the Indoor World Cup. Probably my, probably the first game lining up for national anthems. Um, I remember that and then, see, then watching the New Zealand men do the hacker. In indoor, that was just literally blew my mind at the time. Well, probably would still blow my mind now, 100%, but that was incredible. Something I'll never, ever forget. Um, and best moment outdoor would be probably, well, it would be the um, getting through to the finals of KSL, which we were lucky to do. The atmosphere was incredible. 
No, I bet. And uh, it's a fabulous, I mean, it leads me really nicely onto what I wanted to ask you about next, but um, your coach is at the Lightning. Um, so you've got Chris Guest is obviously one of them at the minute and he's played for England indoor. Um, Vol tremendously fast, you know, got an amazing arm. So he's played a bit of indoor cricket. Um, but your other coach, Rob Taylor, obviously ex-pro at Leicestershire. Uh, how do you reckon he'd get on in the indoor game? I think, I think he'd be okay. I see he hits quite a lot of, I don't really want to say, he hits quite a long ball. So yeah. I think he'd be, his left-handed bit weird. I think he'd be okay, you know. I think he'd go all right. I'll tell you who I have seen play indoor cricket, yeah. which is also really funny because, you know, the All-Stars event. Yes. So I'm getting in, you asked me to get in a leopard team. <laughs> yeah. And we've got an Andy Rishton. We played Joey G, Sally Clark, Andy Rishton. And then we got in John Bateson. Yes. And he's now coaching. He's now coaching with Lightning. So he'd be, he was quite good. So I'd probably get him in again. He, he'd do a job. Yeah, John Bateson. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And Rob's obviously an all-rounder as well, so they're naturally yeah, all-rounders. He'll, bowl some bowls, he'll, bowl, bowl, he'll think he'll bowl like an over seam and then he'll bowl an over left arm spin as well, which will be like absolutely <laughs> It gets me out every time. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, no, cool. And um, so I, funnily enough, we spoke with Chris Guest um, as well, uh, you know, one of these shows. And um, I'm not sure which way around we're going to release them, but he mentioned some of the Lightning teammates that would fare quite well in indoor. Uh, for you, which of your teammates do you think would do... Do the business. Um, we've got a young, we've got a younger girl called Annie Mitchell. Bowls a leg spin, and I think any any form of leg spin in indoor cricket is horrific. Third ball, you don't want a leg spinner on. Yeah. You want to run down and try and bat it away, and you've got someone spinning the ball quite big. So I'd probably go. I think she'd be handy. Good fielder, good athlete. Um, Beth and Ellis likes mi medium pace seamers, swings it d nasty. Good yeah. fielder would be good in the good in the front court. Played a bit of indoor as well. Um, maybe someone like I was going to say Abby Freeborn. She hits it very hard, and she likes to sweep shots. Potentially, maybe not so much indoor. Yeah, Sarah Bryce. I is that is one of them a keeper as well? That you mentioned Sarah Bryce is the keeper. Yeah, so Sarah, yeah. Abby, and Sarah. But Sarah Bryce would hit like I reckon she'd hit kind of you know the corners. Yeah, I reckon she'd hit three line corners very well. Very good on the pull shot. Very good keeper. Bowls a few part time offers. She'd be pretty handy, I think. No, decent. That's, that's competition for the ladies. Uh, obviously, we're going to run a Super League um, with our university women's comp, um, looking at an RDC comp as a, as a whole rather than just a day. Yeah. Um, so there's a few things that we're working on. So it'd be good to see some of these players in action, yeah, obviously. Sure. Um, and that's the big, big question. And, and one of the you know the main reasons that, you know, at the minute, your successes keep going and going. But just recently, um, you know, drafted for the Trent Rockets. Um, uh, how was that? What was that like on that day when you found out? Amazing. So exciting, so exciting. I think, you know, obviously cricket's changing um, with the 100 coming in, which I think is a fantastic opportunity for women's cricket. You know, it's really driving us in the right way with the double headers and the same pay as the men um, for prize money. I think it's fantastic. I think you look at the team we've got in particular, we've got a great group of girls and, and a fantastic, like ability, both ability and personality. So hopefully that our stand is in great stead. But yeah, so excited to get going. Like it's been, like you said, it's been a kind of a difficult winter, probably my most difficult winter for me, really. Um, with regards to injuries, I think getting to the point where I can play again and knowing I've got that is, and obviously the Lightning um, competition before that, it's just so exciting, I'm so excited. Yeah, no, no, that's brilliant. And uh, what about, so not in terms of the Rockets, I mean, it's going to be interesting seeing you in yellow and red, you know, compared to the purple and pink. But oh, no. um, Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will be. <laughs> but um, in terms of the 100 as a competition itself, <laughs> I mean, what is it that you're looking forward to about the actual version of the game? I think it will be, I personally am looking forward to kind of, I think, I don't know how much of the Big Bash you watched, but I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how, how different teams approach it. I think it's going to be so much more tactical than, any, than anyone thinks. I think, you know, with the, the power surge they had um, yeah. and the X Factor stuff they had in the BBL, how much did that change the course of their competition? I think like looking at how teams kind of, how different teams fared, I think that'll be massively important. I think the teams that do best in the 100 will obviously have to play good cricket. But it's teams that adapt quickest to the tactics that were definitely going to go the furthest. Yeah, and I mean, we saw what, like the semi-finals spots were taken up by like just a couple of points. Yeah, so it definitely. made a big difference with the booster points and everything else. Yeah. Um, and, I, and as you know, with indoor, obviously points are just so important. Like it's, it, skins, skin points make a massive difference come the end of the league. So I think you're right. Tactics will play a massive part in it. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure on how they're going to do that. The five ball or 10 ball 
you know, how many you bowl. And, and that's going to be interesting to look at. So, um, yeah, and I think it's a big summer for, for English cricket. So, mm. you know, really looking forward to that. Um, bit of a tough question. So the 100 is one version. 2020 test match one day um you've got all these different franchise competitions um so indoor is obviously just another version as well as the six aside bucks version which you would have played and uh, you know at uni and whatnot um but how do you think indoor as a version of the game can help inspire you know women's and girls to continue to play cricket or take up cricket uh, or maybe make a return to cricket you know the over, over 30s for example i think with regards to younger players i think the fact that you're not out is massive. I think the fact you can play with your friends in a confined environment, like in a confined space, that's kind of really, like it's so exciting, so fast. And I think the fact that you're not out, the fact that hopefully they can go and just play and be done and then it's indoor, it's not, you know, it's just fun, it's exciting, I think, yeah. massively. And I think kind of as you get towards potentially, I don't want to say old, the older age bracket, but kind of, you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, masters, the masters. Yeah, yeah the masters. I think, um, kind of the fact that it's not you're not talking about even a t20 game of cricket lasting three hours yeah like it's quick it's intense then you're done like it's not cricket can be a long even t20 cricket even 100 ball cricket will be will be slightly long is significantly longer than the indoor format and i think that in itself and the social the social element of masters cricket is, is a massive attraction cool no i mean yeah agreed and, and that's one of the big things we're trying to you know work on now is that how do we inspire these women's and girls to come in and, and give it a go you know there's so many women out there that have played at county age group um and then obviously life goes on you, you you know you get your jobs you have kids whatever else it might be and then having that much time playing county cricket's not there and they stop playing and then how do they get back into it like how do they get back into cricket full stop i mean you know yeah. they can go into club competitions and stuff yeah which i'm sure most do but there is still an opportunity to play at a, you know almost like an elite level yeah, um, so that's that, what we're trying to do i think one of the best things about indoor and i think the way that the national leagues kind of evolves and i don't know if you'll agree with this but hopefully you will but i think the fact that now kind of t a kind of the, the main teams you have are getting bigger as in they're attracting more players means that then you can kind of fragment off into different other teams and i think that one of the best rules we've got and I really like the rules come in about kind of you can pick you you know if one player has to go home for whatever reason or one player drops out in the morning, you're not having to play with seven players. You can bring in another player from a different team as long as that's allowed with the captain. Yeah. And I think that that in itself is massive. I think it it just takes away the stress of captains and organisers and management going kind of look we've turned up we've got six players these these five six young girls that are seventeen really want to play but we haven't got a full team. Well, let us lend you some players potentially players with experience will help you or not help, you know, we'll kind of provide you with some experience and then hopefully that will get you into the game and you'll enjoy it and you, you'll want to come back next time. Yeah, I mean, look, it happens in all sports, right? So any amateur sports, really, where it can happen in professional sports sometimes, but there's a car accident, there's an illness, something happens and you're ready to go in the morning and then all of a sudden you're not ready to go because you haven't got that full squad. And what's worse than rocking up and having to play with a half a team or, you know, in, in, in indoor cricket where it's only eight players missing just, right? These are real world things that happen every day to people. There's, there's things that come up, you know, you know, making sure those games go ahead properly and girls aren't missing out on cricket, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, look, it's something that we've worked on. I think the Super League will be a big hit because it's given those that are at the elite level that, you know, that equal opportunity to the men as well. Because the men got to do it last year. Um, there wasn't quite enough ladies to do it last year. But we think this year we found a route forward to make sure it happens. So they'll be on live streamed on YouTube with the commentary and, and everything else. Um, and then obviously developing these new comps with the, the unis and whoever else. I mean, finding new players, that would be massive. You know, all of the, the universities that there's, I think there's about 24 plus teams now around the UK. Um, so just exactly finding new players that could play for England. Yeah, I think for me, the, the biggest thing is getting kind of, I think young girls will be attracted to it. I think it's getting kind of our age group of people who play for a long time and the, the stigma of indoor cricket, I'm not playing indoor cricket. No, no, no. Well, you've never tried it. You don't know if, if, you, if you play it once, you don't like it. There's no pressure to play again. Like, if you don't want to, if you don't enjoy it, then fine. But you don't know until you try. If you'd have said that to yourself when you were 12, 13 growing up, then you never would be playing cricket. So that's my biggest frustration is just, just give it a go. Embrace it for what it is. Stop trying to compare it to outdoor cricket. And just, you don't know until you try. And I think that's the biggest thing is the comparison to outdoor cricket. It's actually, it's, quite, it's kind of, a, in some ways, a different sport. Yes, there are a lot of transferable skills. But until you try something that, you know you could end up absolutely loving it like i did and end up going to a world cup like that's yes. 
that's the be all and end all of it yeah. really isn't it? what's better than that right playing for your country like you said singing the national anthem it no. doesn't get better than that so um, no, well said. I mean, and, and kind of a closing thing, really. So I'm sure there's plenty of young uh, women and girls out there that, look, one day will want to play in the 100 like you are now, will one day want to play in the, as a professional and fulfil their dreams. I think I wouldn't change them for the world. I think kind of when you've been dropped and whatever, definitely, definitely helped me massively. And I think fi- find a way, you, you have to enjoy it. Like there are times when it, you know, when you, when you play with your best mates, which I've been so fortunate to do, kind of wherever I've played, I've played with some great people. That's so exciting. Kind of winning is exciting. Celebrating other success when you lose, exciting. But find a way to, you have to love it because otherwise the tough times are tough. So enjoy it. Have fun. No, that's brilliant. That's well said. And again, a common theme, having fun. It is literally like, if you're not enjoying it, then, it's hard. you know. It is hard. It's a, all sports are hard, I guess, in that sense, if you're not loving it. So um, no, really well said. And it's been really good talking to you, Lucy. Uh, I mean, whenever you're, you're down the indoor it's always great to see you so um yeah best of luck this summer with the 100 um i'm sure you're going to do absolutely fine uh, you know I, i'm not sure about the yellow and red i'm still a big fan of the purple and pink but um yeah okay. embrace the change honey. it'll be okay we've yeah. got this <laughs> cool uh thank you so much lucy thank you for having me guys much appreciate it